Welcome everyone. This side is Aryan Mishra, and uh, a very warm welcome to everyone uh, coming from all, all over the country. This is our uh, lecture number four, which is getting to the red planet. And today we will discuss about uh, about little bit about Mars and everything, and how the Mars has originated in the past few past few hundred years, and everything about what have we explored on Mars and everything. So these lectures are conducted by uh, Sparks Astronomy. And uh, Atul Innovation Mission, you know, collaboration to provide opportunities of listening to astronomical stories to young people. So here we start the lecture. So when we talk about getting to the red planet, it basically refers as that how we have been, uh, you know, Mars is the fourth, is the is the fourth closest planet to the sun. And it is next to the Earth. After Earth, Mars comes up, right? So the red planet. Why do we call it as a red planet? Because it is red in color, of course. Mars was named after the Roman god of war. The planet's rusty red surface tells a story of destruction. Billions of years ago, the fourth planet from the sun could have been mistaken from Earth's smaller twin, with liquid water on its surface and maybe even life. It is referred that Earth is named after the Roman god of war. The planet's rusty red surface tells the story of destruction. What does this mean? First of all, the name of the Mars is from the Roman god of war. It is often said that there was water on Mars, but we don't have any proof now. Now the world is cold, barren desert, and few signs of liquid water. But after decades of study, using Orbiters, landers, and rovers, scientists have revealed Mars as a dynamic, wind-blown landscape that could just maybe harbor microbial life beneath its rusty surface even today. It just basically means that Mars is a cold, barren desert with few signs of liquid water. But after the decades of study using orbiters, landers, and rovers, and scientists, it has revealed that Mars as a dynamic, wind-blown landscape that could just maybe harbor microbial life beneath its rusty surface even today. This means that. There can be a sustainability of life on Mars soon. Mars is very similar to our own planet. If you see right hand side picture, this basically picture is clicked by NASA. NASA is one of the spacecrafts. It, if you see this, uh, this is a sunset happening on the Mars. Mars rotates on its axis every 24.6 Earth hours. If we take 24 hours, it takes 24.6 Earth hours. Mars axis of rotation is tilted at 25.2 degrees, which means our uh, Earth's degree is 23 and a half degrees. Mars seasons, similar to those on Earth, whichever hemisphere is tilted closer to the sun, experiences summer and su spring and summer. While the hemisphere tilted away gets fall and winter. It's very simple that Mars uh, also has hemisphere, and it has hemisphere, and it, it has also has uh, climate change. Climate change, I basically refer as it has winters and summers too. Oh, come on, it's not that similar. We are not that similar also with Mars. One year on Earth is 365 days. Whereas on Mars, one year is 687 Earth days. And one season can last up to 200 Earth days. On Mars, the Northern Hemisphere, spring and summer are longer than the fall and winter. Mars has a far thinner atmosphere than the Earth which dramatically lessens the, how much heat the planet can trap its heat surface. This means Mars doesn't have that strong atmosphere. The temperature on Mars can go to 21 degrees Celsius to minus 142 degrees Celsius. Mars has two moons known as Phobos and Deimos, named after the horses that pull the chariot of the Greek war god Ares. It is the both of the moon are named after the Greek war god of Ares were discovered by As Hall, American astronomer in 1877. The moons appear to have a material similar to many asteroids in the outer asteroid belt, which leads most scientists to believe that Phobos and Deimos are captured asteroids. This basically means between Mars and Jupiter, there is an asteroid belt. Due to the gravitational pull of Mars, it has pulled two of very small asteroids towards its surface and making them rotate around it. That we refer as moon of Moons of the Mars. Atmosphere, the most important thing about atmos uh, Mars. Atmosphere on Mars is composed of primarily carbon dioxide, 96%. 
with minor amounts of other gases such as argon and nitrogen. The atmosphere is very thin, however, and the atmospheric pressure at the surface of Mars is only about 0.6% of Earth's. Right, mission to Mars. Since 1960s, humans have robotically explored Mars beyond any other planet. The highest mission ever sent to any planet is Mars. Now, till now, we have sent 56 missions to Mars, in which 26 missions have been successful. Only two countries have landed on Mars. Only two countries have landed on Mars till now, US and Russia. Eight landings have, have been done by US. Two from Russia in 1971 and 73. Four countries have been successful to enter Mars orbit. That is India, Russia, Europe, and US. India was the first country in the world to make a first successful attempt to Mars you know, on, a, on a first, from the first attempt. And it was the first country in Asia to send a robot, a robotic explorer on the planet Mars. Olympus Mons, largest volcano in the solar system. Mars has the largest volcano in the solar system. It is 624 kilometer in diameter, 624 kilometer bigger than the Delhi, 25 kilometer high in three times, 25, three. It's not, uh, sorry, uh, 624 kilometer in diameter is wrong. It's not bigger than Delhi. It can be bigger than, I think, Goa or something. Uh, I need to check. I need to verify this. I'm sorry. It's not bigger than Delhi. 25 kilometer high, making three times taller than the Mount Everest. The height of it is 25 times smaller, uh, taller than the Mount Everest. So this means uh, 25 kilometer high. So if you see this picture, the left one picture is clicked by NASA spacecraft and the right one is clicked by Mangalya. It is the largest volcano. It is not an active volcano. Remember, none of the volcanoes on the planet Mars are the active volcanoes. Why Mars? Mars is the most accessible place in the solar system. Mars is unique across the solar system in that it is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere and climate. Mars provides the opportunity to possibly answer origin and evolution of life questions and it could possibly someday be destination for survival of humankind. Before that, we will watch a quick video. I'm going to quickly want to play a, a video and let's see what it takes to go to Mars. So just uh, give me one minute. I'll quickly start a video. Have you ever noticed how some people just light up a room from the moment that they walk in? Now so uh, one minute and uh... This was it. This was about how the Mars landing happens and how everything goes up in space. Right. Now, the, the most interesting part is that uh, we need to do one thing that is uh, this is a rocket. This is a rocket. Okay. If you see these boosters, this is PSLV of uh, ISRO. This is the model of PSLV of ISRO. If you these, these see these two things, these are known as bo boosters. These things have fuel. It gives a lift. It, it gives a lot of lift to make sure the spacecraft uh, rocket goes up. And now if you see these things, if you see the, this tank, these are the first stage, second stage, third stage. And then there is a, sometimes in rocket, they have third stage, sometimes in rocket, they have fourth stage also. This is the most upper part is the most important part. This is where a, the satellite, the spacecraft is. Otherwise, entire rocket, the, if you take this, this is where the spacecraft is. And if you see the entire rocket, this is all, it has all fuel. That's it. Right. That's how we go to Mars. You know, right. That's how we do things on the Mars. Now, coming back to the PPT back, I watch, I was talking about how things work up in the Mars. The most important thing is that why Mars? The reason is that we can, each Mar we can reach Mars in less than eight, 
nearly in eight months. If if I if I say hello from Mars to you, it will take fifteen minutes to reach to you. And if you tell if you tell me hello back, it will take nearly again. It will take nearly fifteen minutes back for me to hear it. So my Mars provides Mars provides the opportunity to possibly answer origin and evolution of life questions. Could someday be a destination for survival of humankind? This basically refers as that Mars can be a place where humans can go next and live there. Because one of the most important thing is that it has atmosphere, like it has day, night, it has summer, winter. So what are the challenges to reach Mars? The journey to Mars. The journey will take nearly six to eight months. And I'm sure not one person will go. There will be like four or five people who will go to the Mars. The most important thing about is that we need that much of oxygen supply. We need that much of food. We need that much of a lot of things that we need that much of luggage to make sure that they should come back. We, if we will go to Mars, doesn't mean that we will stay there. Only. We will come back also. And if, if we go, we will at least stay for like two, three months. Then we need food for that also. Cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation means harmful rays coming from the sun. If you remember, I mentioned that in the atmosphere, the atmosphere is not very thin. This means cosmic, it doesn't have a lot of atmosphere or layer like ozone layer. It cannot reflect back a lot of harmful rays which are coming back from the sun. So cosmic radiation is a big problem. So we can uh, have a lot of ultraviolet rays uh, and uh, X-ray, UV rays on us to, uh, to if, if we get ultraviolet and other kind of rays on us, we can die on Mars. Communication is a big problem because it takes 20 minutes for uh, from a signal from Earth to Mars. So it takes a lot of time. So if I, if I send a WhatsApp message to you saying hi, that if you get one tick, the second tick will come after 15 minutes when I will receive it. Then I will reply hi, it will come back after again 15 minutes, it will take to reach to you. So this is a 30 minutes. So if I say challenges to reach Mars, right, it will take challenges will take 15 minutes, two will take 15 minutes, reach will take 15 minutes, Mars will take 15 minutes. So this will become two hours. Challenge is 15 minutes. So uh, not two hours, but one hour. Challenge is uh, 15 minutes, two 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And finally, Mars is one hour. So challenges to reach Mars will take at least one hour to speak. So the lecture which I'm giving right now so quickly will take nearly around at least half a day to, to do the lecture. Atmosphere. Atmosphere is also one of the biggest uh, because there is no atmospheric pressure. For example, on Earth, if I jump at, if I jump on Earth, maybe if I jump in my room right now, I can climb, I can jump till two feet. But, in, but there is less atmospheric pressure on Mars, which can lead us. If I if, if I jump on Mars, it can take us. To, it it can take me to four to five feet higher. And when I when I come down on Mars, when I come down on the surface, I can break my bones. So there are multiple problems for the Mars. So it is not one problem, but there are multiple problems to reach to Mars and to study Mars. So, but still humanity has always progressed towards the science. We still have, we still always want to ask valid questions. We always want to explore when we out, outside the universe also. So this was about the lecture. This, I wanted to give a very small description about Mars, not a very big lecture. Now we are open to questions. What you have.